The guy went ahead and refurbished the paint on this 1970 Cadillac Sedan DeVille recently. Now it's really gonna stop traffic. Like, all the way. Problem is, the guy got to thinking, it itself does not stop nothing. There's, there's no pedal. She just bounces off the floor. Might as well see if we could try to get that fixed. At least get 39.7% brakes, enough to scoot into town. I'll get her lifted up in the air here in just a second, but the gist of the jast of it is I got all the stuff to do the rears, I believe. Shoes, drums, hardware itself even, and wheel cylinders, as long as it's all correct. Haven't checked, just accepted delivery. I still have not found a drinker side front brake caliper, which is slightly concerning. I've searched every nationwide chain you could think of, including like Pep Boys and CarQuest and Rock Auto and you name it. They all list the part, no one has it. So we're going to see if maybe, potentially, it might work. Probably not. But we might have three good or enough brakes to maybe go cruise this thing actually. Let's get it up in the air and just take a look at the rear, see what we got going on. I'm going to lift the old gal up and bust the tires off first and then I'll get her position at the right height in our teeth so we can take a look. She's locked. Oh, easy now. Bentley's cleaning up the frame a little bit for me. We're gonna completely rebuild it while we got it tore down. And by that I mean mazel. Got this side busted off and it doesn't look that bad to be honest with you. Even the drum here probably could reuse on that with this pile of probably from a power break or three. Was it me? Yeah, it was actually. But anyway, I was able to locate these through O'Reilly's, so I'm gonna go ahead and use them. Gonna put new shoes on, of course. Front one's a little worn, you'll get that with them bigger jobs. Gonna replace the wheel cylinder. These just tend to leak out of nowhere. Guy will have brakes, and then all of a sudden, gone. So we don't want that, I don't think. And also, I got a hardware kit that's hopefully the correct one. Sometimes these springs will get brittle and they'll snap on a guy and you'll lose your ability to retract and your shoes will hang up and create a bunch of heat and you'll get brake fade and all sorts of other stuff so the goal is to just you know we're gonna do it all basically and then we got a line back here that's leaking I mentioned that in another video every time we hit the brake it just up here so this guy's got to be replaced on and I might even do the other side yet. Haven't quite made up my mind. It's fairly, oh yeah. So maybe we'll get into that one too. Great. Talk to a lot of fellers and the general consensus is they don't like drum brakes. They just don't like them. But when it comes down to the silver tax of it, they just don't like working on them because it's pretty intimidating and it can be when you look in there. I mean, you got springs shooting in every direction and levers and other levers on top of that. and It can get pretty complicated. But if you just take a picture and just go slow, it's really not that bad, fellas. And the other thing is I see a lot of folks that get in here with 17 different tools. No. Nope. You only need one tool, and that's a vice grip. And you can completely disassemble this whole thing with the exception of the wheel cylinder. And I'll show you how. Top spring, clamp, bring it towards you, let her out. That down here. Right spring off. 
clamp on this way. You gotta get some twist on it, some over the top if you're an arm wrestler. Bring that down like that. Bring the top clip off. Right them out. That's all there is to it. Just one tool. At this point, I'm gonna go behind, get the wheel cylinder off, and we'll probably completely rebuild this unit back here, this backing plate as well. And by that, I also mean. I got this cleaned up. Good enough for the girls we date anyway. And you can see here the frame is unfortunately starting to pit a little bit. So I got a couple different cheek pokers in here and dug around with a wire brush. This is what it would have looked like off the assembly line. And then they paint this undercoating on it and moisture gets under that and starts to do this stuff here. And GM frames, they really like to rot right in this area and a trick to prevent that, fellers, is get an air nozzle up in here, or you can even do it back here. And what you're trying to do is get the dirt and stuff out of there. That one's relatively clean. Normally you'd just see, you know, dirt, clouds of it come out. Moisture gets in there and turns that, like, uh, gravel road dirt, silky, soot, soot sooty dirt into mud and just rots these out. I'm gonna brush on some evapo rust on the frame rails here and all over this and along the bottom here. So then we'll come in and put some fresh paint over that. It's not gonna completely stop it, but can a guy just get her to whoa up just a little bit, you know? You can tell when this stuff is working because of the way that it is. But basically, it'll turn a Nice black color when it's activated. That's when the science is kicked in, basically. I like to just slap it on there. All the extra stuff is just gonna air dry. And while this is drying, we could jump over and take apart the other side. And then by then, we could just shoot over and rejuvenate it. I'll be tipped. I poured way too much out. Perfect. Look at that, I'm just eating the rust right off. Nope still on there <laughs> this side's down different side same story frame even looks the same pretty much identical but i took the cap off the wheel cylinder here i wanted to show you this this one is there's no way that this is functioning so this would have been just a frozen wheel cylinder pretty much doing nothing it could have built pressure but had we not replaced the wheel cylinder we wouldn't have any brakes obviously i gotta run a few of these parts through the cheek poker like those do hippies, that my bobber, that Schwarzenegger. I gotta juice these up, they're froze. Clean these up. The new hardware kit did not come with that, but it's got all the other springs and everything that we need. Even the rubber plug, it's pretty nice. That's just a, uh, what is that? Oh, it's brake vest too. This side I gotta clean up still and get the cheek poker on it. This side, I got the first coat down already of the rejuvenation spray. And that looks quite a bit better. I use this Duplicolor DE1634 engine paint because it goes on everything, super easy to apply. You could do it one coat, but I've been using it for years on frames and axles and drive shafts and anything chassis basically. I use it on this truck, everything up front, even the firewall and stuff. Just a nice way to keep cost down for a guy and looks pretty sharp let's see what we get on this side yeah that's just most of the frame that's okay Most of it's mud, but that's a chunk of metal. 
So remember this was, the water line was like this basically, when it would sit down in that mud. Oh yeah, there's more chunks. So this is the undercoating, which is a little bit of metal on it. That's what that is. We'll get all that cleaned out. I wonder what the Judds are doing today. Just haven't heard from them. Got the shuttles cleaned up here and the adjusters. If you ever get one of these that sticks, just shoot some juice in it, throw it in a vise like this. It goes through your screwdriver drawer because for some reason we all have 348 of these. If you find one that fits in here decent, then you can just start working on them. You get them busted loose and then, you know, juice and then more of this and then juice and then, you know, you just, that's how you do that. This is not all of it, but some of the stuff that's come out of the frame on the Cadillac and other various parts. We're moving along. I got the wheel cylinders in. Next, I'm going to go ahead and get these brake lines in here. And I'm going to use a copper coated nickel. You can't use just standard brake lines up here in the Nort. They just rot right off faster than you can do the alphabet. Got the brake lines cobbled in. Just followed the same paths as the original ones did or close-ish. This little bendy upper tool works pretty handy. If you don't have one of those, just use a big socket. And you can roll those corners pretty easy. Tube bender and then just one of these cheap little kits is all I ever use. Good enough. Little tip to get this whole process when you're squeezing it faster. Put it in an impact like this and it just takes a split second. You don't have to try to hold it and keep this thing from slipping off and it just boom, fitting like that. So now I get to jump out and actually start assembling the brake stuff again. That's nice. Well, the captain side went together just fine. All the hardware was there and worked. No issues there. Just a reminder on the adjustomatical thing. Make sure that this cap spins separately from the spiky wheel skin remover. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to adjust. And this doesn't have a window in it. So for GMs, that's an easy way to tell that it's got the auto magical Throw her an R and just go backwards and it'll automatically adjust for you. I am going to manually adjust this and get it close to when I slide this on, the, the drum here, there's some friction and when I waller it, it's gonna be just barely rubbing here so we're close. This is what I was talking about. I could just feel them dragging and they're kind of taunt sliding on. Shouldn't have to take the old Tanya and beat her on or anything like that. You're just gonna break up your shoes, but snug slide and then kind of feel them move like that. You can also throw it neutral and make sure your drive shaft isn't supporting the vehicle and then you could spin them and do it that way. But ah, this is good enough. Got her down in all the paws again. Both reservoirs were bone dry, of course. So got them topped off. We're gonna get her up in the air and I'm gonna use my juice sucker later 200 and just see if the air machine can't do all the hard work for us. Got that rigged in, plugged into there, you know. And basically what a guy does is you give her some, that creates vacuum, and then you crack your wrench and it sucks. And what you're looking for is you'll start seeing juice and air and juice and air. And you just keep, you know, you just give her until, oh, my neck just got hot. Anyway, until it's all juice and then you know you don't have any air in this line and you just keep moving around, right? Yep. You should get your goggles on. Okay. It's pretty discolored stuff, so we know that's the old stuff that's been sitting in the line. So we're just gonna keep going until a guy, you know, can we see some new juice? Is what I'm saying. Yep. Had the rears bled, had this side bled, and got over to here. Go ahead and hit the brake, Bentley. Yep, blew another line. This is gonna be the hard line right here. 
that goes over to the distribution block right there. You can see I've already replaced the other hard line that goes to the front. So that's that's great. I really don't like putting unions in if a guy can help it, but this line here where it bolts into a junction block over there, that thing is just stripped out. So I've got that prep for a union there and then I'll run a new stick up here and you can see this is where the blowed out was. And I ran that through the cheek poker just so you guys can see where is it oh, over here. That's where she blew out. Just stood no chance of holding up. But some of that stuff is hidden, you know. That was laying up behind this stuff here. Guy can't just hook his eyes on it. But this is a new soft line and pads. I put in when we were working on the front last time. I'm gonna try to find a bleeder screw. Is this one stripped out? I mean, everything's stripped, basically. Took this off, I don't know, does something. Looked in there, sure, good to go. Gonna stick that back on, that's fine. Get this done quick and go back to bleeding, I guess. Now I got this in, just use the original clamp and everything. Sprayed her down with brake clean, try to get some of that brake oil out. I'll come back and finish this whenever I find this other caliper. I'll know to come over here and just put a whole stick in. That little bugger right there just, I soaked it and hit it with heat and you name it. While I'm down here and this is in my teeth, I'm gonna go ahead and plop the filter in here and replace this line. This line is just, it's junk. And so, look how stretchy that is. So the inside is just inflated restricting fuel flow and I want to get a filter in there anyway. There, that's a lot better. A guy can scooch under here and replace that every three miles. Keep an eye on her. Well, it's time to get her bled again, I guess. So I'm just gonna stick little man up in the cabin and we'll do it the old school way. Well, I think we might be, might be good. We might have brakes, man. What do you think? Show us the pedal, what do we got? Oh yeah, that's more pedal than a flower store. Let's get her down and See what happens when you get her on the road, huh? Well, we're gonna know right away if it's got any. I'm covered in head to toe and oil stuff, so Bentley put a blanket in there for me. Got lots of pedal. gonna go cruise around for a little bit keep testing on the brakes see what happens that right front caliper is hanging up and it's hot and smells really bad doesn't it yeah we're also running out of gas and sputtering thankfully we're gonna be able to coast to this gas station up here and dress her tarp her off with 93 I was thinking about maybe sneaking her home but she ain't gonna make it with that dragon caliper also, the brake pedal randomly goes to the floor. Like right now it's working, but once out of five times it just whew. So, the master cylinder is shot basically or on its way. So brake problems keep going. Well, we did make it back to the shop, got her up on the lift again. Making the 97th part list for the Betty White Cadillac, great. But it's getting pretty late for tonight, so I think we're going to shut it down. Plenty more to come on the Cadillac, so stay tuned. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it very much. See you next time.